All right, what's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Living the Dream podcast. Today, we're focused on Proverbs 5, verse 11, and it reads, And at the end of your life, you groan when your flesh and body are consumed. So again, Proverbs 5 is talking about adultery. In the first couple of verses, it was talking about, hey, don't follow some person whose speech is as smooth as oil. We talked about not following people who are trying to sell you a bag of goods, right? Because their speech is smoother than oil. But in the end, they're as bitter as wormwood and sharp as a two-edged sword. They're going to cut you and cut themselves. In the next verses, it talked about how they're following a path of death, basically. It's not good for you. It's not good for them. And they don't even know it. And if you follow them, it will lead to a life where you give your honor to others and your years to the merciless. The whole reputation you built for yourself will become pointless. And reputation is one of the things that Warren Buffett talked about. It takes 10 years to build and five seconds to ruin, right? So all that all that time building reputation, trying to be a good person and trying to love people and be loved, it'll all be for naught because you'll ruin it in that 10 seconds where you get exposed for following that path that that person's following. And they don't even know they're following it, right? They're leading you and they're like, hey, I'm going somewhere good, but they're not. And you can tell because they never ponder the path of life. In addition to that, verse 10, we talked about how once you're on that path, strangers take their fill from your strength and your labors go to the house of a foreigner. You've been following the wrong path. You've been following somebody who's on the path of death. And because you're on the wrong path, it lets the wrong people come in your life at the wrong time or the right people come in your life at the wrong time and it doesn't work out for anybody and because of that it's a in a position where people are just going to take 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 from you and once they take all the, your strength they're going to take 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 all your resources that brings us to verse 11 which is like you've been following this path people have taken from you you've been duped by the speech that is of smooth oil right there was something else in here too um oh yeah the lips that drip honey and the speech that's smoother than oil. You, you've been duped by it and you've been following this path. Your reputation is ruined and your years have gone to the merciless and um, they've just been taken advantage of and strangers have taken their fill of your strength. <clears throat> your labors have gone to the house of foreigners and now you're at the end of the life, end of your life and you groan when your flesh and body are consumed. And so my interpretation of this is act while we can, because the time is coming where we won't have the energy we do today. At the end of your life, it says your flesh and body will be consumed. And that's just coming for all of us, right? Like people say when you're twenties, you need to be taking a big risk. You need to be doing crazy things. Cause you won't have the energy for that when you're 30. And when you're 40, you really won't have the energy you had in your thirties. And as you get older, you'll just lose energy, You'll gain perspective, right? Things just won't be as important to you or your mind kind of sets in stone, right? Like our brains become less plastic as we get older. And plastic means just our ability to learn, our ability to adapt, all of that good stuff. And so uh, brain plasticity, look it up if you don't know what I'm talking about. Um, yeah, that's what I got from this verse. It's like, take action now, because if you don't, at the end of the life, you will be groaning and you'll be groaning because A, your labors went to foreigners, your strangers have, the strangers in your life have taken your strength. Strangers, you might even call friends. Like we call people friends who we don't even know and they're just taken from us all day, right? And um, yeah, we're just regretting our whole life at the end of our life. And now we don't have the energy to do anything about it because our flesh and body has been consumed. So the entrepreneurial application of this is the same as the first interpretation. It's like, take massive action today. Don't pay the bill for regret by paying the bill for failure early in life. And that was a little confusing, but I'm saying do not pay the bill for regret. Instead of that, pay the bill for failure early in life. And the bill for failure... <clears throat> Seems like it is costly up front because it's a lot of embarrassment. It's a lot of overcoming some limiting beliefs. But really, what the bill for failure is, is an investment in success because you are becoming callous to failure. You are learning along the way if you're failing forward, and that failure will eventually end up in success because you have applied lessons learned, right? And so that's what I'm taking massive action today. That's what I'm saying. Don't pay the bill for regret. Instead, pay the bill for failure and realize that the bill for failure is actually an investment in success. And what I mean by that is up front, you know, if you were at a restaurant, right, they'd be like, hey, the food costs $20 and you pay $20 for the food. 
What you didn't know was that that $20 was going into an investment and in 10 years, it was going to get buy you $20,000 worth of food. It's like, dang, they invested that on my behalf. That's kind of what the transaction is like a little bit. You know, it looks like you're paying 20 bucks for like a hamburger at first. And the hamburger was adequate. It was like a McDonald's dollar menu hamburger, right? But you paid $20 for it. But really that $20 for that one hamburger led to you being able to buy a $2,000 hamburger later because of some knowledge you gained, right? I don't, I think that metaphor kind of broke down, but failure is a stepping stone to success. That is all I'm saying here. So where is this showing up in my life? I would say everything I do carries an inordinate amount of risk. Everything I go after carries an inordinate amount of risk, but also an inordinate amount of reward. And I'm doing this because I don't want the time to come when my body has been drained of its energy. My flesh and body are consumed. And I look back and I groan. I want to look back and I want to rejoice. I want to be in the moment and I want to rejoice because I'm enjoying the fruits of my labors over the many years of pondering the path of life and following it instead of following somebody who had smooth oil talking lips that dripped honey and, um, you know, led me down the path of death when they didn't even know it. So that's where it has shown up in my life. I take an inordinate amount of risk to get an inordinate amount of reward because I understand that's where I've been called. That's where I get the most energy. That's where I'm called to expand the most. And it will lead me to leaving everything on the field of life because I will go hard for the things that I care about and for the people that I love. Where do I want this to show up in my life? I want to keep this perspective. It's easy to forget how precious time is. And at the end of our life, our flesh and body will be consumed. We will have one year left, six months left. There will be a day that is your last day living on earth. And that's hard to think when you're 23 and you think you have your whole life ahead of you, but that day could be today. That's what's crazy. And um, it's easy to forget how precious that time is and how happenstance life is, right? And so how can you guys apply this to your life? I would say set up some KPIs for a SMART goal. And SMART goal stands for a specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and time-bound. Again, that's a specific goal. So I want to be able to do 100 push-ups in 15 minutes. Measurable, you can measure whether or not you can do 100 push-ups in 15 minutes. Achievable, you can definitely get to the point where you can do 100 push-ups in 15 minutes because, well, I'm at that point right now. And realistic... Maybe if you can't even do one push-up right now and you've never done a push-up in your life, that's not the goal you want to set. But for me, that would be a very realistic goal because I can do it right now. And then I want to be able to do 100 push-ups in 15 minutes by the end of February. Time-bound. So you have a month to train. It's February 1st right now. You have about 28 days to train to get to the point where you can do 100 push-ups in 15 minutes, right? And so that's how you kind of set up a SMART goal. And then the KPI for it is I'm going to attempt to do 100 push-ups in 15 minutes once a day, every day. And that's your KPI. Your key performance indicator is today, did you attempt to do 100 push-ups in 15 minutes? Yes or no. That may not be the best training regimen, but you guys get my point. Um, Yeah, so that's KPIs. That's a SMART goal. And what you think is achievable and what you think is realistic, I want to challenge you here to really expand your mind. Because there was this quote in The Power of Positive Thinking where Norman Vincent Peale challenged people. He was like, be optimistic for a week, entirely optimistic about everything. At the end of that week, you'll realize that your realism was pessimism and that your optimism was realism. And so it's important to keep in mind that what you may think is realistic may be skewed towards pessimism. And you may, you probably are, you definitely are capable of way more than you think you are right now. And because of that, expand yourself with what you think is achievable and realistic in a certain time. And you can expand yourself by looking around you, not around you in your immediate circle, because your immediate circle is going to be a lot like you, but look around you on social media, look around you at other entrepreneurs, other people in the fitness industry, other marriages, other friendships. Do they emulate a friendship, a marriage, a body, or a bank account that I want that I don't think I can have right now? Because if somebody else is doing it, I promise you, you can do it too. And remember, regret carries a heavy 
price. You don't want to get to the end of your life and be groaning once your body and your flesh have been consumed. Do it now, act fast, and um, yeah, get the results, love the people, and provide the impact that we both know you can. All right, guys, thanks for listening. We will see you on the next one. And on that note, we're out.